Well, let's spend some time practicing drawing chair structures. We learned from this chapter about cyclohexane and other uh, cycloalkanes. And one of the more important aspects of cyclohexane is that it exists not as a planar structure, but as a sort of a zigzag pattern in a ring. And we call that a chair structure. Uh, so let's practice taking our planar structure and translating it into what we might call the chair, a 3D structure, something that gives us more insight as to the three-dimensional relationships of this molecule and anything that's connected to it. So I'm going to go through the same procedure outlined in the book. To draw the chair, we draw a shallow V. Then we draw a line coming down from one side of the V. And then a line parallel to the first line we drew. And two more lines parallel to the other lines. So I will show you the parallel lines in a second. And so this is a basic chair. And if we look at some lines here, we see that across the ring, we have a set of parallel lines. And we can do the same thing with two other sets of parallel lines. If you've drawn a chair structure that doesn't really have parallel lines, you need to try again. And if you have to try again, don't worry about that. I often start over when I'm drawing my chairs. You'll see me do that in the classroom. I might even do it on this video. But here we have more or less three sets of parallel lines. Let's practice our chair once more. Shallow V, line coming down from there, parallel to the first line, parallel to the second line, parallel to our third line. So let's look a little more carefully at the chair. Um, I'd like to point out in this case that there are three carbons located at alternating positions around the ring, and I like to refer to those as up carbons. They are part of uh, sort of a V or a mountain peak that are oriented in an upward fashion. And you can see that if you look a little carefully like that. Uh, let's look at the other three carbons. And as you might guess, I call those down carbons. And they are located in what looks like a valley in three different areas on the ring. It's important to be able to pick those out very quickly during our exploration of chair structures. Let me draw another chair, and I'm going to put the substituents on now, and we'll talk about how we describe those substituents. And I don't really like that chair, so I'm going to try again. All right, that's better. So now I'm going to put on the 12 hydrogens. First thing I'm going to do is put one hydrogen on each carbon oriented with its CH bond in a vertical fashion. So straight up or straight down. And I'm going to take the carbons that were up and I'm going to draw an up bond from them. So you can see that those three carbons that I labeled as up earlier all have a hydrogen pointed straight up. The three carbons that were labeled as down earlier all have a hydrogen pointing straight down. I want to point something else out that I'm going to make some bonds thicker here. These thicker bonds should be looked at as pointing towards you. Uh, and the bonds in the back, say these, uh, or those carbons, should be looked at as pointed away from you. So we're looking at a, a side-on view. It's almost as though we took our planar structure and we looked at it in the plane of the page. That's kind of what I want you to think about when drawing these chair structures. If you have a model kit, now is a great time to get out your model kit, make a chair structure, add all 12 carbons, and see the relationships that we're going to explore here. I'm going to get rid of these arrows. All right, so those are six of the 12 hydrogens that are on the chair structure, on a simple cyclohexane, I should say. The other hydrogens will be located in what we call equatorial positions. So I'm going to call these axial. And let me use green down here. And the green are axial down. You can see how they're pointed downwards. The blue are axial up. So now we're going to add 
the other hydrogens. On the upward facing carbons, there are equatorial hydrogens that point slightly downward. So if we look at this equator or upward facing carbon right here, and I imagine a horizontal line. If I draw the equatorial hydrogen, the, the last bond that needs to go on that yellow, or I'm sorry, orange dotted um, carbon, it will go right here. And I want to point out that this orange bond is parallel to these two CC bonds that are in the ring. So when you're drawing equatorial hydrogens, they should be, have a bond that's parallel to an already existing bond in the ring. So we're going to call this equatorial. And a downward facing hydrogen. I can draw another um, equatorial and downward facing hydrogen. I'm going to use a different color in this case for the up carbon over here. Again, it should point slightly downward and it should parallel two of the bonds already existing in the ring. This is also equatorial and down. And I'm going to abbreviate equatorial. And I can look at one more, see if I run out of colors here. There's our third upward facing uh, carbon. Its equatorial and downward facing CH bond will project towards you like that. It is parallel to these two bonds in the ring. Okay, now be careful here. A lot of students like to draw that purple hydrogen like that. Uh, and so that's not going to work. Um, for one, it clutters up the drawing. And if you look on your model kit, your model, you'll see that that H doesn't really exist in that position. So I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, be sure that your H is projected towards you. So those are the three equatorial and downward facing hydrogens. Now I need to draw three equatorial upward facing hydrogens. And to do that, I'm going to use black so I don't confuse these colors. But I have on each of the downward carbons one last hydrogen to add. And again, I'm going to parallel one of the uh, bonds in the ring. So for this carbon, I would parallel it with a red bond. You can see how that's parallel to the existing CC bonds in the ring. I could use a purple bond opposite my purple hydrogen there. And I can use, let's see, a orange bond for my final hydrogen here. I'm keeping these hydrogens black because I'm going to use black to label equatorial up. So there are three hydrogens that are equatorial up. There are three hydrogens that are equatorial axial down. There are three hydrogens that are equatorial down. And there are three hydrogens that are axial up. So we have sort of four types of hydrogens. I'm going to redraw a cyclohexane uh, and explain these in a slightly different manner for you. There's my chair. I'm going to draw all of the axial bonds in green, whether they're up or down. And I'm going to put hydrogens on these. So axial are outlined here in green. Then I'm going to use blue to show the equatorial bonds, whether they're up or down. And actually these could be bonds or substituents. Okay, now I'm going to circle in red anything that could be labeled as up. And so the up carbons, of course, can be labeled as pointed upwards. The axial hydrogens on those carbons can be labeled as pointed upwards. The equatorial hydrogens on carbons that are not pointed up can also be labeled as up. I don't know if up is a scientific term, but I like to use it to describe the location of substituents on a cyclohexane ring. And basically what we're saying is 
above the plane of the ring. And lastly, let's use uh, orange here to describe down. So these carbons here, excuse me, are all labeled as downward facing carbons. So are the axial hydrogens that are on those carbons. And of course, the downward facing hydrogens that are on the up carbons are also considered down. And so these are below And if you make a model, it's very easy to see this plane. So I encourage you to think about these terms as you are drawing more complex uh, cyclohexane chair structures. Of course, we could put anything we want in place of this hydrogen. So we don't have to have a hydrogen there. We could have a methyl, a t-butyl, even a phenyl ring. And we'd call it a downward facing axial phenyl ring if we wanted to for that position. Uh, so we can use a bunch of, a number of different vocabulary terms to describe uh, various positions on this cyclohexane chair.